fellowship, water, joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Water, blessedness, water, peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all the
just one or two brief but necessary announcements. Tuesday night at half past seven, it's our men's fellowship evening. Uh, we're looking forward to the visit of Colin Jenkins from the Siemens Christian Friends Society men. It's your night, why not come along and enjoy that evening together in our hall Wednesday night at half past seven. It is our church night and we would encourage you uh, to make church night a special night in your week and join us on Wednesday evening. Members of the assembly keep in mind at half past seven on Thursday evening it is the annual general meeting. And then the services next Lord's Day, 11 in the morning when we commence a new series of studies entitled Authentic Christianity. Authentic Christianity, commencing next Lord's Day morning. We just completed our series of studies in the life and times of Elijah the prophet. 23 studies uh, on the life of God's servant. And in the will of God, we commence a new series on Sunday morning entitled Authentic Christianity. <laughs> next Sunday evening is a special evening. Our family and friends night convene in the Ravey Memorial Hall. And we look forward to interviewing Toby and Esther who have been worshiping with us for some time now. We've appreciated their presence and their friendship and their fellowship. And it will be lovely just to get them to know them a little bit better next uh, Sunday evening as they share the story of God's grace in their lives. Our singers will be Sharon and Stuart Officer. So do come along, there's some cars uh, about that evening, and uh, do take them with you this evening. You never know who you'll come in contact with this week. Uh, it would be awful if you came in contact with someone and you didn't have any of those cars. So take them uh, this evening and keep that in mind. The month of February is our Leprosy Mission Month. We support the work of the Leprosy Mission, and there is a magazine related to that mission entitled In Touch. There are some available. Do take one as you leave <laughs> this evening. All the meetings that we announce, we announce them subject to the sovereign will of God. We're going to stand and praise God as we continue to worship Him this evening, singing this, Rid Him all heal the power of Jesus' name. Let's stand and praise God together. Thank you.
But let's unite our hearts together in prayer. Let's all pray. <coughs> Father in heaven, we thank you for your Son, our Saviour, the Lord Jesus. We thank you that you have given him a name <coughs> that is above all other names. And one day at his name, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that he alone is Lord. Men in their sinful blindness crowned him with cruel thorns, but God has crowned him with honour and with glory. And the highest place that heaven affords tonight is his by sovereign right. We come to worship you tonight. We come to praise you. And in praising you, we come to exalt the person of our Lord Jesus. We thank you for his work and for his worth. And it's because of who he is tonight, <laughs> because of what he has done for us in the place called Calvary, that we can praise and worship and exalt him. We thank you for the part of the day that is gone, for help given, for any measure of blessing received, we give you the honour and the praise and the glory. We thank you that another Lord's Day evening finds us gathered in your house, seeking your face, calling upon your name, asking for that help and that blessing that all of us are in need of. Your word teaches us that the blessing of God maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. We thank you for your word tonight. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for that day and hour and the experience of so many where the word of God shone into our darkened hearts and minds, revealed to us our need of a Savior, led us to the foot of an old rock cross where we bowed to thee and trusted in Christ alone for our salvation. That's the prayer of our hearts tonight. That no one in this meeting will leave this place tonight without knowing that all their sins are forgiven and their names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. We thank you for this great assurance that God wants to give to us. The assurance that all our sins are forgiven past, present and future because of the sacrificial death of our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray again for this community in which we meet tonight. We thank you for every church door that is open, for every pulpit that is occupied in church, mission hall, or whatever. We thank you for every faithful presentation of the Word of God and the claims of Jesus Christ. We pray for those who will share the gospel on a one-to-one -one basis, uh, for those who will put a a gospel track into someone else's hand. And we pray that that may be read and that the word of God will not only enter into someone's hand but enter into their hearts tonight. Great is the need of our province. But our God is a great God, an almighty God, and there's nothing to be compared with him. And so, Father, we look to you. Remember again those tonight who cannot be with us because of circumstances Outside the controls, some are battling with illness. Though God, we pray that you will bless them tonight. Uh, some are caring for those who are in need tonight. Lord, be with them and be gracious unto them. And before this day runs its course and into eternity, we pray that many new names may be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That across our province tonight, God will move by His Spirit. <laughs> and cause many to sense their need of a Saviour and call upon his name. So hear our prayer and bless us as we continue in your presence. For Jesus' sake. Amen. We turn again to the Gospel of Matthew, uh, Matthew uh, chapter 5, and uh, we begin to read at verse 1. You know, the Bible is so different from any other book. If someone was to hand you a secular book, a historical book, or whatever, you might attempt to say, I've read it before, and so there's no point reading it again. But no matter how often we read the 
Word of God, we can never become too familiar with God's Word. And God speaks through His Word. And sometimes He speaks in a way that He never spoke before. And so it's always profitable to read the Word of God, no matter how often we read it. We do that this evening as we begin in verse 1 of Matthew chapter 5. Seeing the multitudes, he that is the Lord Jesus went up on the mountain. And when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you, and other all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is God's word, and we give thanks to God for his precious word. Before we come to the word of God, we're going to remain seated and be led in praise and worship by the new dawn singers <laughs> singing this lovely song, Living He Loved Me. Thank you. Oh, 
together in prayer. Father, we realize this evening that for all of us, this day is nearer than when we first believed. And as we turn to your word just now, we pray for the gracious help of God the Holy Spirit. We pray that nothing will distract us from hearing your voice tonight. The experiences of the week that has passed, the responsibilities of the week that lies ahead of us. Lord, we pray that these things may not cry our minds in such a way that we're distracted from hearing what you want us to hear. We pray this in Jesus' name and for Christ's sake. Amen. Some years ago, when our grandchildren were small and we had a greater responsibility for looking after them, one of them got into a little bit of difficulty and they were asked to leave the room and to sit at the bottom of the stairs in our house, which for that moment of time became an odyssey. And when someone went out to speak to them, they used a phrase that they heard their mother often said, what's your problem? What's your problem? I wonder if you ever asked someone that question. What's your problem? Maybe you've gone into a shop to purchase an item and you've maybe been sharing your fears and your apprehensions and the person who you've been doing business with has simply said, what's your problem? In this revelation of God's truth in Matthew chapter 5, and in this verse that we're focusing our attention on, verse 8 of Matthew 5, our problem is highlighted. My problem and your problem is the problem of the heart. The Lord Jesus says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they, and the emphasis of the text is this, only they shall see God. You see, I have a heart that has been damaged by sin. I have a heart that is disobedient. I have a heart that is defiled, defiled, and at times deceived. And we're called here to examine our hearts. And in doing that, we see a difficulty that needs to be clarified. We focused our attention on that last week. The godly bishop from Liverpool, the late J.C. Ryan, says this, The seed of every wickedness lie hidden in our hearts. The seed of every wickedness lie hidden in our hearts. They only need convenient seasons to spring forth into mischievous vitality. Now the same writer says, There is more wickedness in all our hearts than we know. And when we come to the Bible, we discover that the basic needs of all men and women never changes. And the answer to that need never changes. The wise writer in the book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 20, says, Keep your heart with all vigilance or with all diligence, for from it flows the springs of life. Put away from you crooked speech and put devious talk from you. Let your eyes look directly forward and your gaze be straight before you. Ponder the path of your feet, then all your ways will be sure. Do not swerve to the right or to the left. Turn not your foot, turn your foot away from evil. He speaks here about our feet, he speaks here about our eyes, he speaks here about our gaze and our speech, and all of these things flow from the heart. What the Jeremiah has said, that the heart is deceitful, and above all things, desperately wicked. Yes, your heart, and certainly my heart. So here's a difficulty that needs to be clarified 
our hearts. But here is a, a description tonight uh, that needs uh, to be uh, clarified. A description that needs to be clarified. Blessed are the pure in heart. What does Jesus mean here when he talks about pure in heart? Well, there are two words I want you to think about tonight as we unpack this truth. And the first word is the word wholeness. The word that is used for pure here is the word from which we get our English word wholeness. It means without hypocrisy. It means that what is on the outside reflects the inside. It suggests motives that are not mixed. It has the idea of utter sincerity, complete and total single-mindedness. I have no need to come to an intelligent congregation like this tonight and say that today's world is riddled with insincerity. We see that in the political world every day. Uh, we see that sometimes in the business world. Insincerity, hypocrisy, and pretense. People say things they don't mean. They say things behind one's back that they would never dream of saying to their face. And this can happen in every strata of society. And sometimes within the church, sometimes to our charge, we can be no different to those who do not profess to have God's salvation. Jesus says, Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are those whose life is all of one piece, whose outside and inside correspond. The Greek word for pure is like a pure water, water that's not mixed. Wine that is not mixed. It's used of grain that have been widowed of all chaff, of white bread that have been made of the best of flour. It's used of silver and gold which have no alloy, no impurities in them. It's used of, of an army which have been rid of all disloyal and inefficient soldiers and was now a first class fighting force, an army purged of every undesirable element. Pure. In other words, a pure heart is an unmixed, an undivided heart. Here's a very interesting verse that we find in the book of Psalm, Psalm 86 and verse 11. Unite my heart to fear your name. Unite my heart to fear your name. In other words, let me rid my heart of everything that would prevent me from fearing your name. And of course we've established from the word of God that this word fear must not be substituted with the word frightened. The word fear, when it speaks about fearing God and fearing the name of God, means to have such a healthy regard for God and what he says that we take his word serious. And that we respond to his word in a way that is going to please him. And if we respond to his word in a way that is going to please him, then it will certainly profit us. Isn't this where the trouble lies with most of us? Undivided hearts. Isn't this the dilemma that we face as we come face to face with God? Uh, one part wants to know and worship him and to please him. And the other part wants something else. A divided heart. The psalmist says in uh, Psalm 86, and teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. I will praise, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and I will glorify your name forever. Notice the little phrase that the psalmist uses, I will praise you with all my heart. God does not want all the vital hearts. The letter to James tells us that a double-minded man 
is unstable in his ways. And a double-minded man is the outcome of a divided heart. A little boy was asked, is your father a Christian? And he said, he is, but he doesn't work much on it. A little young lawyer once said, I might have been a Christian if I had not met so many who said they were. Oh, may God save us tonight from half-heartedness. God wants a pure heart. God wants our hearts to be united under the banner of King Jesus. No longer being pulled in every direction. But a heart that is marked by wholeness. But there's a second verb that comes from this <laughs> word. A pure blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are those whose hearts are marked by wholeness. Blessed are those whose hearts are marked by cleanness. By cleanness. You see, it's used of clean clothes in contrast to dirty clothes. It has the thought of the removal of dirt and a defilement of filth of every kind. A pure heart is a clean heart. In the book of the Revelation, in the last two chapters of the Bible, we see what a premium God puts on purity. John describes the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, and he's overwhelmed by its beauty. And here's what he says. He says, it's like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And he goes on to describe it in all its beauty and glory. And then he says, but there shall be, but there shall by no means enter in anything that defines or causes an abomination or a lie, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Jesus says here, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. You see, it offends people. It blows their mind when you share with them this searching truth that our self-righteousness, the very best that we can do, the very best that we can offer is but filthy rise in the sight of God. That stands in contrast to the thinking of people who have never been enlightened by the Spirit of God. The average person in the street, the average person in the workplace will lean and quote the idea that somehow or other acceptance with God is the outcome of what they do for God. Whether it be in kind deeds, whether it be in giving to uh, re uh, recognizable and respected charities, that these things in themselves will build up righteousness on their account, which will ultimately make them accepted by God. And that stands contrary to all the gospel has to teach. The hymn writer puts it like this, Nothing in my hand I bring, simply to thy cross I cling. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are those whose hearts are marked by wholeness. Blessed are those whose hearts are cleansed. How can I get a clean heart? How can I have this cleansing within? Well, that cleansing begins the moment we come to Christ. The moment we bow beneath the shadow of the cross and recognize that when Jesus died for sinners, Jesus died for me. If you recognize you're a sinner tonight, I can tell you this, that Jesus died for you. You recognize that you're a sinner this evening, I can tell you that there's cleansing in the blood of Jesus Christ for all of your sin. All of your sin. Not most of it, not part of it, but all of your sin. In the moment we are born again of His Spirit, our sins are cleansed. We cannot cleanse ourselves. 
but we were born of the Spirit. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sins. We become new creatures in Christ Jesus, but the old still remains. And even as Christians, we are tempted with sinful thoughts. <clears throat> we are capable of doing sinful deeds. And we need to continually pray with the Sabbath, create in me a clean heart, O God. Fill me with clean thoughts and right desires. And that's why God gives to us the Holy Spirit. You heard the story about some men who were walking down a country road and there was a house. And one man said, I own that house, for I designed it. And that man said, no, I own that house because I built it. The man said, no, I own that house because I bought it. And the fourth man said, no, I own that house because I live in it. And that's what salvation is all about tonight. You see, God made us. We're not here by accident. We're not here by chance. We have been created by God for God. Behind every design, there's a designer. Behind every plan, there's a planner. And God made us. And he made us for himself. And he has bought us through the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. And he longs to live in us. That's what it means to be a Christian. That's what it means to be a child. But, you know, there are multitudes of people in Ulster tonight who think they are a Christian because they have made some sort of a decision, signed a card, filled in a form, and Jesus Christ tonight has no relevancy to their life, has no effect upon their life, and they need to realize that not everyone, not everyone, that says, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. And the moment you are truly born again, the moment you call upon the name of the Lord in sincerity and in truth, God gives to every believer the Holy Spirit. You can't be a Christian and not have the Holy Spirit. And he gives the Holy Spirit to take residence in the very depths of our personality. And he works by the Holy Spirit to cleanse our hearts. That's our only hope. If we're born again, we are in God's hand, and the process is going on. God is dealing with us, and our hearts are being cleansed day by day. And because God is doing it, the day is coming when we shall be faultless and blameless without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Without a trace of dirt or defilement in any part of our personality. We shall go through the gates into the city that is eternal. But let's be clear about what I'm saying tonight. All that I have said does not mean that we don't do anything. If we get dirty hands, we need to cleanse them. We need to cleanse them by the means that God has provided for cleansing. Sometimes when I I was running about in the home and my mother used to say you would think there's no soap and water in this house. There was plenty of soap and water but it wasn't being applied in the way it should have been applied. And Christians will never grow in grace. They will never grow in the faith unless they appropriate the means of grace that God has given to appropriate. I'm talking about the Word of God. I'm talking about prayer. I'm talking about the fellowship of God's people. We just don't sit back and do nothing, but we must use all the means of grace. All the means of grace that God has given to us. The Bible, prayer, worship, fellowship, service for God. We must use these means of grace diligently. 
and we must open our hearts daily to the cleansing word of God. We must seek daily to fill our lives with the things that God has designed for our spiritual good. That's what it means to have hearts that are marked by wholeness and by cleanness. And so as we've unpacked this text, as we've listened again to this teaching of the Lord Jesus, which is called the Sermon on the Mount, as we've looked at this beatitude, we see a difficulty that we've tried to identify, the heart. The heart. Is thy heart right with God? That's the question that all of us need to ask. Is thy heart right with God? Washed in the crimson flood, cleansed and made holy, is thy heart right with God? And if it is right with God, then that heart will move and mold and mark and motivate our lives in a certain way. There's a difficulty that we have tried to identify. There's a description that we've tried to clarify. Blessed are the pure in heart, happy, content, are those whose hearts are marked by wholeness and cleanliness. And finally, tonight as we close, there is a directive that we need to amplify. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Could there be anything more wonderful than that, to see God? That has been partially fulfilled now, for we can see Him in a way that all believers can see Him. One of my favorite hymns is that lovely hymn that has lines that run like this. Heaven above is softer blue. Earth around is sweeter green. Something lives in every hue, Christless eyes have never seen. Birds with gladder songs or flow, flowers with deeper beauty shine. Since I know as now I know, I am His and He is mine. We see God in the beauty that is all around us. We see Him in the unfolding events of history. We discover that as we review history, we see God on the throne governing the nations and the affairs of men. From a pure heart, we see Him in the ups and downs of life, in the good days as well as in the not so good days. We look back and trace His hand amidst all the events and experience of life. And we can understand and appreciate in some measure that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. The simple fact is that we only see what we're able to see. We only see what we're able to see. If the ordinary person goes out on a night when the stars are shining, he sees only the pinpoints of light in the sky. <coughs> But in that same sky, the astronomer can see many familiar friends and he can call them by name. And from that same sky, the navigator could plot a ship's course back to the harbor. Again, the ordinary person could walk along a country road and see by the hedgerows nothing but a tangle of wild grasses and weeds. But the train botanist would pick out this and that and call it by name and know its use and he might even spot a rare flower. Blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. A new neighbor came into the neighborhood and one morning she was hanging the washing out on the line and when the husband of the other neighbor came home. His wife said to him, Do you see that new neighbor's clothes hanging out in the line? They're very dirty. They're not clean at all. She maybe has a poor washing machine or she needs to change her washing powder. This went on for a little while. 
And then one evening the husband came back and said, well, what about the washing machine? She says, you know, it's great. She must have got a new washing machine. She must have got changing her washing up powder. The washing is crystal clean. The husband says, I know. She says, how do you know? She says, I cleaned your windows. <laughs> <laughs> we can look through the wrong windows, can't we? And sometimes we can see the wrong things. If the window is dirty, you'll never be able to see out of it. And if our hearts are soiled and soured by selfishness and sin, we shall never see God. This has been partially fulfilled in this present world. But it will be perfected, it will be fulfilled. Be fulfilled one day in a world that is yet to come. Paul says, now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. One day faith will give way to sight. There will be no groping, no guessing, guessing we shall see and know the truth. What a marvelous prospect. And John tells us, everyone who has this hope in Christ purifies himself, even as he is pure. Blessed are the pure of heart, the difficulty that needs to be identified, the condition of our hearts, the description that needs to be clarified, pure, pure, wholeness, cleanness, the directive that needs to be amplified, we shall see God. But that day is dawning nearer and nearer. Are you ready for it? Are you looking forward to that day? The old hymn says, we are going to see the King someday. We're going to bask in the eternal glory of his presence forevermore. Blessed are the pure of heart, for they, and only they, shall see God. Let's pray. Again, our Father, your word has searched our hearts. But then your word tells us that you want our hearts and you want them to be pure, to be clean. We thank you tonight for the cleansing power of the blood of Christ. We thank you that the blood can cleanse from every spot and stain. We thank you for the blood that flows from Calvary, the blood of the slain lamb, the blood of him who was a sufficient sacrifice for all who would trust in its cleansing efficacy. We thank you tonight that there's power in the blood of Christ my Saviour for me and for all. We thank you for the cleansing ministry of the Holy Spirit who lives within the hearts of all who believe to wean us away from the things that define. We pray our Father that every day we live we may be filled with your Holy Spirit under his control. We thank you for this great and glorious prospect that one day we're going to see you. One day we're going to see our Lord Jesus Christ in all his glory and splendor. One day we're going to see him face to face. Now we walk by faith, but then faith will give way to sight. We praise you for this prospect. <clears throat> and we ask you that such a prospect will work purity into these hearts and lives of ours, that we may be sold out to Jesus and live on in the banner of him who is our heavenly king. We ask this tonight for his name's sake alone and for your glory. Amen. We're going to ask us tonight to remain seated <coughs> and in quiet, prayerful attitude to listen to the words of this song. It's a prayer. And may it be the prayer of all our hearts tonight as we respond to the word of God. Purify my heart.
purify my heart. Let me be as gold and precious silver. Purify my heart. Let me be as gold. Is to be holy, set apart for You, Lord. I choose to be holy, set apart for You, my Master. Ready to. From within, and make me holy. Purify my heart. Cleanse me from my sin. Deep within, refiner's fire. My heart's one.
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.